Well, howdy, folks. I got. I just told the story about those old loggers that saved my life when I burnt the back of my head off years ago. I got another story about those old boys. And that cabin was so remote up there. In the summertime, there was a ton of traffic. It was a shortcut to Chico Hot Springs over on the Yellowstone. College kids, families, just traffic all summer. And across that county road, there was about a half mile of rolling sagebrush that went up some cliffs, and they were called Eagle Cliffs. And eagles had nested there for hundreds of years. The nest was probably, I'll bet it weighed a ton. It was probably 14 feet across and 10 feet deep into the nest and three foot high. Generation after generation had used this nest. And you, you can look that up. That, that, they do that everywhere. They get so big, they take trees down. They get so heavy. So Anyway, I'd watch these eagles nesting for at least three years by then. And you could go up this little Spring Creek Canyon and through some timber, get up top, a little bit of technical scrambling is all, and you could get right on the lip and look down 10 feet at this nest. And I took pictures of those birds for, for three years, from the egg to hatching to when they actually fledged and flew. And the female, she got so used to me that she'd sit on the nest for a couple minutes and then fly off and just circle. But that male, he never did tolerate me. He'd scream and dive. And of course, I'd take friends up there to see this stuff. And they just go berserk. But they knew who I was after three years. And so one day I get up there to check on them. I think they were getting ready to fly. And I'm standing at the bottom of this 100-foot cliff. And why I decided to climb that cliff is beyond me. When you could hike up this little canyon and scramble across top of the rocks and be there. And I thought, well, hell, I can just climb up there. Stupid. Made a lot of stupid decisions in my life. But anyway, I'm crawling up there and about probably 50, 60 feet off the ground. Now the ground's like this, and then you got your cliff. You get up there 40, 50 feet, and there's a ledge as wide as a sidewalk that would go right up to the nest. And I thought, all right. So I got on tennis shoes and a pair of shorts. No shirt, no boots. I get up there to that ledge, and I'm not afraid of heights. And I didn't even think twice about it. And I get to that ledge, and there's about a 400-pound boulder sitting there. And I test it, feel solid, kick my feet loose, and I'm airborne with a 400 pound boulder in my arms. And, you know, I just had enough, just barely enough time to push myself away from this boulder as we're falling. And then I hit the cliff and I don't remember even hitting the bottom, but I come to down there and my head's lacerated in about six places. My the whole shattered this orbit of my eyeball in about six pieces and both ankles are broken. <laughs> And I'm a half mile off the road in this sagebrush. You know, I couldn't even make a crutch out of a tree or anything. So I crawl on my elbows. And of course, by the time I get to that road three hours later, I look pretty tough. And I had that long hair and the blood's all coagulated and looked like dreadlocks of blood. And so I'm laying in the ditch thinking somebody will come by on the way to Chico Hot Springs or something. And two car loads of kids did come by about an hour apart. And I'm you know, laying in the ditch trying to not hurt, all twisted up, and they'd slow down 10 feet away, and they'd slow down and look out the window at me and just hit the accelerator, and I thought, well, damn, I'm going to die out here tonight. So those loggers I told you about when I burnt my head that didn't like me much, here he comes down the road that afternoon. He's got an old pickup truck, and the bed's full of rock bars, chainsaws, gas and oil cans, what have you. And he pulls up, <laughs> I'll never forget this. He pulls up and I'm laying about 10 feet there in the ditch. And like I said, I'm just covered with dried blood. And you can tell one ankle's going this way. <laughs> and he turns off the truck and he kind of leans on the steering wheel like this and spits a little snooze. And he's just staring at me. And you know, it feels like an eternity. And he spits again and he looks me right in the eye and he goes, kid, don't you think it's time you moved to town? <laughs> <laughs> and as bad as I'm hurt, I'm laughing till I'm crying, you know. And he's all disgusted with me. And, well, he's afraid to put me in that cab of the truck because it, my back might be broke or something. So he drags me up in the bed of that truck, and there's rock bars and chainsaws and dirty oil and gas and ropes. And he lays me back there and takes me into town. And that poor little same Korean doctor that saved me from burning up, he, he put me back together. And, cast both feet. But God bless them old loggers, man. That was 
two years in a row, they saved my bacon. <laughs>